We have got to uh, continue recruiting uh, minority folks into the law enforcement profession, into the criminal justice profession. Uh, we need members of the minority community to become lawyers, to become prosecutors, to become police officers, to become judges, uh, to, to affect that change uh, and make things fair for everybody involved. Welcome to Mentoring Kings. Where do we go from here? A look at social justice in America. The Fraternal Order of Police is, is the largest police representative organization uh, in the country. There's over 354,000 officers uh, that are involved in the FOP. Uh, the FOP is involved in, in doing uh, legal defense and labor relations for police officers, uh, ensuring that they have uh, good working conditions, fair pay, uh, have good promotion opportunities, and that all of that is fair uh, and, and not based on uh, race, uh, orientation, any of that. Uh, my involvement with the FOP was, was kind of a situation that uh, I fell into. Uh, when I got my first job in Louisville in 1994, I had a sergeant tell me about the FOP. I didn't really know anything about it, but he encouraged me to, to sign up, so I did. Uh, and I was just a member for many years. And then uh, three years ago, uh, I actually had a mentor that asked me if I wanted to be involved on the national level of the FOP. And uh, I was very, very blessed by uh, my fellow trustees from across the nation who voted me uh, to serve as their national chairman of trustee where I sit now. And I, and I do that very proudly and humbly, uh, but had no aspirations of doing it as an African-American male to see what happened to George Floyd and how it happened and why it happened, uh, it has created a very big conflict for me. Uh, on one side, I'm a proud law enforcement officer, but on the other side, I'm, I'm a very, very angry uh, black male and a very angry American citizen uh, to watch those, the, that event unfold and, and others across the country the way they have. Um, and it's, it's been a conflict for me. I, I even get uh, choked up talking about it uh, because there are so many uh, good law enforcement officers out there that do their jobs the right way every single day uh, and, and, and are now painted as, as being one of, one of those officers that, you know, we, we're all looked at badly. And that's, you know, that happens over time. And, and we have to we have to gain the trust back of our communities when these events happen. Uh, but what I will say to your viewers uh, is I'll repeat myself. Uh, I don't know of one officer in the country that looked at that and said that was okay. Me personally, I couldn't watch that video more than twice. I, I, I haven't watched it uh, more than the two times I watched it from different angles. Uh, and I know a lot of officers feel the same way. It just sickens our stomach and breaks our hearts. Uh, that officers did that uh, and, and, and acted that way. So uh, I, hope, I hope that message comes loud and clear through to you and your viewers that there's the, the vast majority of law enforcement officers in this country were not okay with that and we're committed to doing whatever we need to do to make sure that that doesn't happen again. What we have to understand in law enforcement is that just because I don't police that way just because I don't racially profile or I don't uh, use excessive force on folks. I've, I've never done that ever in my career. Uh, I've called out other officers who have done so. Um, but just because I do my job the right way and just because I do it uh, the way it's supposed to be done and the way it's supposed to be trained and I treat people fairly, that doesn't mean that that happens everywhere. We, we know that there are problems in our profession. And we know that there are officers who have bad intentions. And so we have to kind of change our culture. That's one thing that, that is absolutely nece uh, necessary for us to continue policing in today's world is we as law enforcement have to look at that and change our culture a little bit and say, you know what? We've got to listen to these communities. We've got to hear their voices just because I don't act that way or my partners don't act that way doesn't mean that somebody somewhere is not. 
uh, because I truly believe that 99% of the officers out there are doing it right. But if, even, if they're, even if they're acting in good faith and make a mistake, we have got to look at those situations and go, okay, even if we didn't do that wrong, what can we do better? And if we did do it wrong, then we have got to absolutely be held accountable because we cannot have that. That's the perception, right? That, that, that is the overall perception is that we have a code of silence and that we protect each other. And so some of the discussions we're having on the national level uh, that we hope will address this and, and we welcome community input on this is that we think, you know, we need to make those, that investigatory process when somebody files a complaint on an officer, um, we've got to make that process a little more transparent. But I can tell you, nobody like, nobody wants bad cops out of the profession more than good cops because it's those officers and their actions that paint us all in a bad light. It tarnishes all our badges when we have bad officers doing bad things. We don't want them either. And so uh, from that regard, our, our police administrations and police leaders uh, have to have the courage to, to make those decisions and, and fire officers that need to go uh, or seriously discipline officers that need to be correct. As far as defunding the police, I personally can't support it. I don't support it because I see all the other good things that happen out there. Um, but I think we need to do a better job of telling our communities that as well. I think there's some people out there calling for defund the police that don't understand what that means and understand where some of those programs might suffer that if we do a better job telling them that, if, if they might say, you know what, you have a point. If you talk about defunding the police, you're gonna take away community partnership programs like Shop with the Cop where, where officers go out in, in communities and do Christmas shopping with kids that are in need. Uh, you're gonna end programs like uh, Citizens Police Academies where citizens can sign up and go through an actual modified police academy within the police department so they learn our jobs and they learn what we do and they learn what the laws are and they have that input. Um, you're going to do away with, with you, you know, you're going to take officers away from uh, community policing projects, uh, agencies that have a community policing officer in which their sole responsibility is to go out in the public and educate them, talk to kids at schools, uh, talk to elderly folks about identity theft and fraud and how to avoid it. Uh, those community policing officers that go out and provide uh, deadbolt locks to elderly in the community so they can feel safe in their homes. It's those types of programs that are going to suffer. It's, it's not going to necessarily be taking cops off the street. It's going to be taking cops out of the community and those partnerships and the things that, the, the, that those budgets fund that we do outside of just writing tickets and arresting people. I don't think racism plagues our profession as much as, as a lot of folks are saying it does, but it does, we know it exists. If we're going to deal with that, if we're going to really look long and hard at the problem of racism in America, period, but, but in the law enforcement profession, then we have absolutely got to go out and recruit and be mentors to young, forward-thinking, diverse, uh, folks in our communities, Black, Hispanic, LBGTQ, all of the different social groups and races and ethnic backgrounds out there, they've got to come into law enforcement and be a part of it to help us fix the problem. Uh, because they grew up, they, you know, we, we have all grown up in these communities where that has happened. And, and these people have experienced uh, you know, they have their experience to bring to the table and to make us better. And so I feel like I, I still um, need to be a big part of that in my career. So as hard as it is to, to put on the uniform some days recently uh, and walk out the door and head to work, um, I do believe there's hope and I do believe we can make this better and I want to be a part of that. And so um, even with the mixed feelings and emotions that I've had with this, uh, I, I want to make this better, not, not only as a police officer, but, but as a black male in this country, I want to do my part to make it better. And leaving the profession isn't, isn't how I do that right now. So I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. 
I'm going to keep having these types of conversations with whoever will have them and figure out what we can do to, to get this better and make it right. Thank you for tuning in to Mentoring Kings. Where do we go from here? To learn more about future episodes, visit www.mentoringking.com and join the conversation on social media by following and liking at Mentoring King on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Mentoring Kings is back featuring ESPN sports analyst and former NBA player Jalen Rose and best-selling author, health guru, and new host of the Doctors TV series, Dr. Ian Smith. Join us.